graphing is because different – I'm just kind of rambling here just to give you a heads up. The Different functions have different shapes and different looks. They do different things. If I was a business owner, I would want to know if my profits are going like this or going like this. You know what I mean? Like you can't necessarily forecast these things, but like if my profits were curving and actually going to start decreasing, I would want to know that, figure out why so I could account for it versus profits that are just skyrocketing, right? So, um, and then in the real world of like physics and that kind of stuff, we do a lot of modeling natural phenomenon with mathematics. And so if you know the shape of the graph, that something is, is behaving like, you can predict what it's gonna do. A really good example is what we're gonna talk about today. So if I take an eraser and I toss it, what happens? Gravity pulls it back down, it bounces off the floor, and that follows, because of gravity, it follows a parabolic path, which is what we're about to learn about, or what you've already done, but that we're gonna review, okay? And so we can predict what balls are going to do based on that mathematics. If you have ever played a modern video game of a sport, like basketball would be a really good one, or soccer, or really any for that matter, or even these days, like when I was a kid, they didn't really do this, but these days, even like shooters, the bullet when it leaves the rifle drops. Like they're, they, they have gravity built into that, right? And even things, sometimes like wind resistance and stuff like that playing in the game. So um, how do they do that? With math. Like the, the people who coded the video game for, for a basketball or something would have put equations just like the ones that, although they'd be a little bit more complicated because they're not going to be nice round numbers, but otherwise they would use quadratic equations from grade 10 to model those things in the video game world. Okay? And then all kinds of other computer simulations and stuff would do it as well. But there's like th this kind of stuff happens all the time. So anyway, so that just generally my point of this rambling is different functions behave different ways and do different things. And when we can visualize the graph, it's way better than looking at an equation and expecting to understand what it's going to do based on an equation. If I look at a bunch of letters and numbers, that's not a visual thing. I can't picture in my head what that means. But if I know what the graph looks like, then I can be like, oh, so when you throw the ball, it's going to come up and go back down. Whereabouts will it hit the ground? You can start making sense of these questions. So this is why we graph. So to me, graphing is all about having a sense of what the function looks like, its shape, where it is located, that kind of thing. And that's the approach we're going to take on this stuff, okay? Okay, enough rambling. Let's get to some work here. So uh, the first thing we want to remember is the simplest quadratic, which is y equals x squared. Um, there's no extra numbers. There's no what we call transformations. We'll get to that in a minute. It's, it's the simplest one. It's called the parent function or the base function, or I've heard it called the mother function before. Um, and uh, it's really, really kind of important and almost necessary to have a good sense of what it looks like to start. And then we compare all the other graphs uh, as, as to how it's changing the parent function. So the parent function looked like this. I add some numbers to the equation. How does that change what the parent function looks like? That's the approach just generally that we take. So this is how I like to think about it. Um, the, what, is just, what is this function, y equals x squared? I take the input. You can write this down or you can just watch. I take the input, square it. Whoops, if I could spell square, right? Square it, oh, thanks. And square it to get output. We often get so lost in the steps of the math, we forget what we're actually doing. And this is what this relationship means. Whatever number goes into it gets squared and gets spit back out. 
So if I if if I'm going to be the input and I put zero in, what is the output going to be? Tanner? Zero, because zero squared is zero. If my input is one, I square it. What's the output? Brooke? One. If my input is two, I square it. What's my output? Four, two squared is four. People hate ask, answering easy questions. It's like, oh, okay, sir, just do it yourself. You don't need to ask us. I know. Three squared, input is three, square it, I get nine. Okay, so what about going the other direction? What about negative one squared? Be careful, negative one times negative one is positive one, so it's still positive. Negative two squared, negative two times negative two is positive four, and negative three squared is positive nine. So I've got these inputs. And this function squares them and spits them back out. And what we built here is like a table of values. X goes in, Y comes out, and I get all these ordered pairs of negative 3 and 9, and negative 2 and 4, and so on and so on. 0, 0, I'm not going to write them all out, dot, dot, dot. Right? That's what a function does, and we think about an ordered pair is the two numbers that go together, and we can graph it. But the idea is the input, which is your x, is being squared. That's the relationship. I'm making a big deal out of this because it's going to be important for kind of the way that we talk about this. Is the relation the the fundamental relationship between the input and output for a quadratic is squaring. Does that make sense? Okay, let's graph it. So. I've got this point. You can graph them from top to bottom. You can graph them in whatever order you want. You'll notice the order that I graph them. I start with this point. It's kind of important. Does anybody remember what that point's called? Origin. It is the origin. But if I move it for like a quadratic or it's called a parabola, it still has a special name even if it's not there. The vertex. Remember that word from grade 10? The vertex. Okay, very good. And the vertex of the parent function is on the origin. Very good. Um, I go 1, 1. I go over from, from that base point. I went over 2 and I squared it to go up 4. Back to that base point, the vertex. I go over 3, square it to go up 9. See how my input is like how far I go over and my output is how far I go up. So I go back here, and then we notice that it's the same numbers but on the other side. So I squared negative 1, and I got 1. Squared negative 2, and I got positive 4. Squared negative 3, and I got positive 9. And we get this symmetry from the vertex. I go the same distance over each direction, left and right, and I go the same distance up. Okay, and then we connect the dots with a smooth curve, as smooth as we can. Put arrows on the ends because it's not just those seven points. There's an infinite number of points. It goes on forever. We could find more. What if I went over four? How far would I go up? Sixteen? What if I went over five? How far would I go up? Twenty-five, right? Square it. You're just squaring it. You don't have to find those numbers, but it would be easy to find more numbers. Don't you agree? Think about that relationship. I'm... How far am I going over? What's my input? And I square it to find my output. Everybody good with this so far? Okay, we're going to talk about a couple of properties. We can easily graph any other quadratic functions. So different formulas, which you'll see on the back maybe of this sheet. Yeah, we're going to start to see some different ones. But... I think that's supposed to be by. By considering how the numbers in the equations transform that base graph. And so here they are. Here are the ones we're going to look at, A, H, and K. So A is always the number that's out in front. And, what, and your job tonight 
and and sort of today and tomorrow over the next couple of days is to get used to finding the a value in different equations and getting used to what it looks like and what it means. So a will stretch the graph vertically or compress it vertically. Okay, it's really important to know that it um, does not move the vertex. And I'm going to make a couple notes here. Write them down so you can refer back to them if you need to later. If A is negative and we say A less than zero, the graph flips. This is not actually what we call it, but we'll write it down later. That's called uh, reflection in the x-axis. But instead of looking like this, it looks like this. Right? It flips down. So it's going to open downwards. <coughs> if A is small, what do I mean by that? I mean between 0 and 1. So like a decimal or fraction or something like that. But fractions can be big. So it's not just a fraction. Fractions can be big. But we might think of it as a fraction. 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4. Those are all between 0 and 1. Or 0 and negative 1. But I don't want to complicate things too much. Then it compresses the graph. And if A is big, so bigger than 1 or negative 1, it stretches. If you don't know that, it's going to be really hard to do all this graphing because we're not graphing with a table of values. Like that is not what we're doing. So you need to know, you need to recognize, oh, that's the A value. That's going to do this. What impact is that going to have on the graph? That's just something you need to know. And then you go and do it because we know what the base function looks like. We know what the input-output relationship is, and we just go and do it. Okay, let's get this done. H shifts the graph left or right, but doesn't change the shape of it. So it doesn't stretch or compress or anything like that. And notice that it is opposite to what you would expect you've seen this before but so that won't be as big of a surprise to you but it's a little bit weird when you first see it but you'll remember we'll we'll we'll, we'll do an example and you'll see what i mean if you if you're not sure and k remember what they, remember what a h and k are they're these things right they're in the function there so they're going to be actual numbers okay so the k is the number at the end K shifts the graph up and down, but doesn't change the shape. Does that make sense? Okay, and the last point here says to graph, we're going to, first thing we're going to do is find the vertex. We're going to think of what the, the growth pattern is because it's affected by the A value. Am I growing up or am I growing down? Is there a flip, those kinds of things? If it's stretch or compressed, and then just find the other points from there. Okay, let's give it a try. And then you, we know, we're not going to read through all this, but basically you have um, a sheet and the homework sheet looks exactly like this where you graph and then you just fill out all the blanks. So that's what the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H is, is just filling out the blanks. Okay, but this is what we're going to do and this is what you're going to do for your homework. Okay, first thing you, we want to do I just want you to watch. I don't want you to do anything yet. If I were to put the parent graph on this, it would look like this. Okay, I don't want you to do this. Okay, it would look like that. 
There's my points. I don't have an A value because there's nothing out in front of that bracket. So my A value is just one. My H is actually negative three. I'll talk about that in a second. And my K is two. When I look at this function, y equals x plus 3 all squared plus 2, those are the a, h, and k values that I get. So remember what we said. What's the h? The h is the inside the bracket. It's this 3. What does it do? We need to know what it does. It moves the graph left or right, but doesn't change its shape. Is this a good visual demonstration, or is this just weird? Right? So if I'm the graph, I'm just moving back and forth. I'm not changing my shape. I'm just moving like this. That's all H does. What does the K do? Moves it up and down, but doesn't change its shape. And remember what we said about H, it does the opposite of what you would expect. So plus three, we think that'll move to the right three, but it actually does the opposite. The plus three is actually an H value of negative three. So we're moving to the left. So I'm going to start with the vertex, and I'm going to take this point, and I'm going to move it 3 to the left. And then I'm going to take that point, and I'm going to move it up 2, because the k value of a plus 2 is moving up 2. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Take this vertex, move it over 3 and up 2, and find it right there. I could take every one of those points and do the same thing, move it over 3 and up 2. And that would be fine. And that may have been how you, when you were first learning about it, how you thought about this stuff. But do you remember what this function is, what its nature actually is? I go over and I square to go up. So what I can actually do is I can start at my vertex and I can go over and square to go up. So over 1 squared is 1. Over 2 squared is 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Every time i got to go back to the vertex. Over 3 squared is 9. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's what that relationship means. Over 1 square to go up. Over 2 square to go up over 3 square to go up. If I wanted more points, I could find them. I'm going to go over 4, and there's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So my next point's going to be way up there and then symmetrically way over there. Is everybody okay with that? Any questions? Okay. Let's draw our smooth curve. It's really hard on a computer. Oh, my gosh. Put arrows on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to go and fill in the details. We're going to do as many examples as we can together. And so even if it's a little bit fuzzy right now, every example we do will probably, you'll be like starting to get it. And hopefully by the end of the period, you'll be like, okay, yeah, I remember doing this. What are the transformations? We have a horizontal shift. And we, we don't use um, like integers, so we describe it. So that's left three and a vertical shift up. We don't say plus two, we say up two. I know that seems picky, but when we're describing the transformations, we use words. Horizontal shift, left three, vertical shift, up two. Again, that's what you have to figure that out when you look at the equation. You have to know, based on the equation, that that's what's happening. And this one had no other transformations. Where's the vertex? It's negative three, two. Because I went left 3 and up 2 from 0, 0, where the vertex usually is. Which way does this open? So, yeah, up, because the points go up from the vertex, so up. 
the growth pattern. So this is not a formal thing, but, but this is going to help you when it gets a little bit harder, I think, um, make sense of this stuff, okay? And graph quickly and efficiently. From the place where we started, which is the vertex, I go over one, and then I go over two, and then I go over three. And I go up, squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine. So this may be something that you haven't seen before, but you don't necessarily have to actually do it. If you're graphing a different way, you can, we can talk about that, but you should try it. I think about what my input is. I put in one, square it to see how far I go up, what my output is. Put in two, square it to go up four. Put in three, square it to go up nine. Okay. The max and min value, this graph has a minimum value of two because it never goes below that line. So that's what we say. We say minimum of two. You don't just say the value. You say whether it's a min or a max as well. The domain is x is an element of the real numbers because x can be anything and the range... Remember, it has a minimum of 2, so y will always be greater than or equal to 2. I hope I'm not rushing through this too much, but I want to get to the other examples, and hopefully this is enough of a review that you, that you kind of remember it. And then do you remember what the equation of the axis of symmetry is? Again, just put down your pencil and watch for a second. Think about the symmetry. Where would I draw a line that would be a mirror image from one side to the other? And it would be like right here, through the vertex. It's a vertical line that goes through the vertex, whereas sy symmetrical, so I go four points this way to get there, and I go four or four squares that way to get there. Three squares to get there, three squares to get there, right? So symmetrical. And where is that equation? It's at x equals negative three. It's always the x value of the vertex, but it's always the straight up and down line that goes through the vertex. You can draw it in there uh, lightly if you want to. And it's an equation, so it's always x equals. Any questions so far? Okay, let's try another one. It's a bit more interesting. What's happening in this example? What's my A value? Can anybody guess? Two. It's this guy right here, right? The number out in front that's multiplied. What's my H and what's my K? Just watch for a minute. It looks like this, y equals a bracket x minus h bracket squared plus k. h is always inside a bracket with x. k is always outside a bracket by itself. So what do I have there? What's my h, what's my k? Does anybody want to guess? Or do you want me to just tell you? Which, okay, so negative 4 is the? Okay. Negative 4 is the K. Very good, because it's outside the bracket. H isn't 1. What do you think it is? Oh, what were you going to Were you going to ask something? Oh, nothing. Kenzie? 0. Okay, it's going to be 0. If it was 1, it would say like plus 1 or minus 1. It's 0, so it's not there. That's something we want to get used to. What does that mean? No shift sideways. Right? No shift sideways, but I'm shifting up or down. And the two changes the shape of the graph. So we'll talk about that in a minute. My Where is my vertex usually? It's at zero, zero. I have no shift to the side, but I'm shifting down four. So from there, my vertex is going to go down four. 
We, we find the vertex first. Then I'm going to use my growth pattern. Do you remember what it is? Over one, over two, over three. What are the ups? Do you have a question? Yeah. Kind of. We're getting, we're getting to that. That's what we're about to do. What are the ups usually? Square. I take one. Just watch for a minute, okay? Take one and square it. I go up one. Take two, square it. Go up four. Take three, square it. Go up nine. But because my A value is stretching the ups, I'm going to take all of those and I'm going to multiply them by two. And one times two is two. Four times two is eight. Nine times two is 18. And those are the actual ups we're going to use. So I go back to my vertex. And Ellie, is this what you were saying? You go over one, up two? Yeah. yeah. Back to the vertex, over two, up eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And use symmetry to graph both those at the same time, right? And then over three, up 18. So this was already up eight. So I got to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I went up 8, then I went up 10 more, so I went up 18. And then draw a curve through it. Never use a ruler to draw a parabola. Use a ruler to draw your axes. Any questions about this? Does that, do you, okay, so just like now we've kind of seen a little bit of everything. We see how H moves it side to side but doesn't change the shape. K moves it up and down but doesn't change the shape. So if I go over two, I go up four because the shape didn't change. But that A value changes how far I go up when I go over 2 or over 3 because it's stretching it or it's going to compress it. So to see how if we find the vertex and then we know how the growth is changed, we can find the rest of the points. Does that make sense? Okay, let's try these transformations. So we have a vertical stretch. by a factor, this is how we say it. You do kind of have to say it the same way. Don't make up your own way of saying it. Just try to get used to saying it the right way. Vertical stretch by a factor of two. And that was because A equals two. You don't have to say that, but just so it's in our notes. A horizontal shift. Oh, no horizontal shift. So we don't have to write that. You can say that if you want. A vertical shift down four. Some people would say vertical shift negative four. Try to remember to use the word down instead of negative. Vertex was zero, negative four. Direction of opening is still up. Max min value still has a min. And this is negative four. Domain is easy. It never changes for quadratics. The range, y is always, it's opening up, so it's always greater than the minimum. And the equation of the axis symmetry is x equals 0, because that's where I would draw a straight line through the vertex. I'm just going to keep trucking unless you have questions. I, the, the silence worries me. Yeah. Oh, even more? Is this familiar? Do you remember, you remember doing this? You do quite a bit of graphing these in grade 10. So even, so are people feeling okay or not okay? Not getting any feedback here.
We good? All right, let's try another one. You can. I think if you practice this way a little bit, I think you won't have to, and I think you'll like this better because it's not as muddled. But yeah, you can. So the first thing we're going to do when we before we graph is kind of analyze the equation and see what's happening here. <coughs> so what do you notice? Anything? A is less than 1. What does that mean? It's going to be compressed. It's kind of nasty to draw because it's kind of like harder to get the points in there or whatever. But yeah, that's a good start. So A is going to be compressed. It's reflected. There's a negative out in front. So I'm going to write this down. You don't always have to do this, but you might want to, especially if you're getting used to it. A is negative 1 half. So there's a reflection. I could go and write that. Transformations, reflection... In x axis is how we say that. And remember when we go to draw it that we have to, that our points are going to go down because it's reflected. But that's what that means. The one half means it's compressed. The points aren't going to go up or down as fast because it's compressed. What else do I have? What's my k value? It's zero because there's nothing outside the brackets added on. Isn't that right? So my K value, oops, my K value is zero and my H is actually negative one. You don't have to worry, like H always has the opposite sign. So plus one looks like we're going right, but we're actually going left. Okay. So I'm shifting. So this is what you want to think about. Okay. So I'm reflecting. I'm shifting to one side. I'm going down and I'm compressing. So if I do my growth pattern, I go over one, then two, then three. Instead, I'm gonna go down one, square it four, square it nine, but I'm like dividing each of these by two. So I'm going down a half or 0.5. What's half of four? Two. What's half of 9? 4.5. Decimals are better than fractions for graphing. And you can see how instead of going up this much, I'm only going, well, down. I'm only going down half of that. Like you can see the compression happening there. Okay. And I'm, I have no shift up or down and I'm going left one. So let me find that point. Looks like it's right there. And I go over one, down a half. Point's probably too big. Over two, down two. Over three, down four and a half. Instead of going down nine, three squared is nine. It's a quadratic function. Three squared is nine. But I'm compressing it. So instead of going down nine, I'm going down half of that. What would be my next point? If I go over four, that would be down. Very good. I thought you were going to say 16 because I thought you were just going to give me that. But if I go over four, that would be down 16. But we're going to half of that, which is eight. See how easy it is to find new points? Let's do it. Over four, down four, five, six, seven, eight. Sounds like we're dancing or something. Are any dancers in here? Isn't that what you, you count that out before you dance? I don't know. Instead of going down 25 for the next point, I go down half of that. Instead of going down 36 for the next point, I go down half of that. I could go and find other points if I wanted to. Okay, very quickly, let's finish the rest of our transformations. We might be able to fit one more in. We might not. 
the raining out there? Uh, so we have a vertical compression by a factor of two or, or half and a horizontal shift. Remember, we went left one. So my vertex went left one to negative one, but my but it didn't change up or down, so it's just at zero. Direction of opening? Down, right? So that, that reflection changes that. This is the whole point of, of what I'm talking about when I was doing that rambling about functions before. When I look at this equation, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's just a, it's just a jumbled mess of numbers and letters. But if I start to tie the numbers to the transformations, I can start to see, oh, the negative, this is going to open downwards. So it's going to look something like this, and it's going to be compressed, so it's going to look something like this. And we start to get a sense of what that graph looks like, because we're used to graphing. Min or max? max? This one has a max, and it was a max of zero, because that's the highest y that it goes to. Domain for parabola never changes. We're going to graph other things that will have different domains, but you've probably picked up on the fact that it never changes. Range y is an element of the real numbers such that, in this case, y is less than or equal to the max of 0. And the equation of the axis symmetry is x equals negative 1 because that's where you draw the vertical line through it, the x value of the vertex. Any questions? I'm going to let you try the next one, and I'm going to walk around and help, and uh, then we'll take it up, or if we don't get time, we'll post it or something like that. But uh, Before we get to this next example that's on the right here, thank you. Just drop there. Before we get to that, I want to show you this little demo, because again, I want to talk, remember how we talked about the A, um, the H, and the K? So right now you can see these two equations, this top one and this bottom one, are the same. The, the only difference is in the top equation, it's going to show me the values of A, H, and K. So there's A, there's H, and there's K. It's going to show me those values every time, whether it's a zero or not, and this one will look more like what the equation actually looks like. I can post this later if you want to play with it, but I've already posted a different little applet that is out there that you can that you can, that some of you can use and you might find helpful. So if I change h, notice that when I drag h and I make it 5, I've taken the same shape and I've just moved it over 5. It doesn't change. And notice that inside the brackets it says minus 5. So inside the brackets always does opposite of what we would expect. It says x minus 5. We think minus is to the left, but the graph actually went to the right. And I can just drag it back and forth. If I drag it, if I drag h to negative 7, so it's x plus 7, x plus 7 all squared, but I've moved to the left 7. Okay, let me put that back. What happens when I drag the k? If I drag it and make it bigger, like 5, it actually goes up 5. But the, again, the shape of the graph doesn't change. And if I drag it down, it goes down 5. And every point moves down 5. You can see them all moving the same. They're all moving together. That's why the shape of the graph doesn't change. So I could move it down and over. And every one of those points kind of moved the same down and the same over all together. Okay. And then what does the A value do? Well, if I make it bigger, look, it stretches those points and the distance between the points changes. Because if I've already gone up nine, I'm, I'm going to double that and go up nine more. But if I, I've only gone up four when I double it, I only go up four more. So that's why we call it a stretch. And you can see that it stretches those points and makes the graph kind of look skinnier and taller makes it look that way. And if I go the other direction, it flattens out. And you can see the red graph is the original 
graph, right? And now it's flattened out. So it looks like shorter and wider kind of thing. And then I can see if I make A negative, it flips down. But it still has the same effect where it's compressing if the number's small or stretching if the number gets big compared to the original graph. So what does this mean? It means I can look at an equation, like if I make, let, let me reset this. If I make my equation uh, two x plus one minus four. The minus four moves it down, the plus one moves it to the left. And then instead of the normal shape, I double everything that I go up from there. And the one thing that we want to know is the vertex is only impacted by the shifts. So my vertex is always going to just be this number and this number. It's going to come from there. And we know the shape of the graph and we can use A if the shape changes to find the rest of the points. That's the idea of what we're doing. So this next example we're going to do has a little bit of everything in it. So let's take a look at it. This is what we did yesterday, I think, where we said, what's my A value? What's my H value? And what's my K value? You don't have to do these in a particular order or anything like that. Somebody want to give me one of them? A is 2. H is 4. And you said 4 like positive 4 on purpose, right? It's not negative 4. It's the opposite sign. That's why... When it says minus 4, I'm actually moving to the right 4. Very good. And so then K is negative 3. Thank you very much. So we can get those values. And what you need to know is what do those values do? The H moves it side to side. The K moves it up and down. So my vertex normally starts at 0, 0. But I'm moving to the right 4 and down 3. And I can go straight, right four, and down three, and find my vertex. And then this might be a little bit different from how you did it before, but the next step that I would do is I would think about the original growth pattern and how it's changed. So the original growth pattern goes like this. Uh, my, if my input is 1, I square that and I go up 1. 1 squared is 1. If my input, I go over 2, I square that and I go up 4. If my x is 3, I go over 3. Over 3 from where? From where you started, which is the vertex. Because the base function starts at 0, 0, right? That's the idea. So these overs and ups are all relative to the vertex. And I square that and I go up 9. Okay, but what I'm going to do because I'm stretching them, my ups are all going to be doubled. I'm not actually going up 1, I'm going up twice that. So I go 1 times 2 is 2, 4 times 2 is 8, 9 times 2 is 18. And then these are the numbers that I use from the vertex. And the reason why I really like this method is because it works not just for parabolas, but for all kinds of graphs. In fact, even graphs you've never seen, this could work for. Because it forces you to think about what the actual relationship is. I'm squaring it. So from my ver so now I go back and I use that and I go over one but up two and again remember that's from the vertex and I go over one the other way and up two from the vertex if I go over two where am I going to go I'm going to go up eight so one two three four five six seven eight. 
And this one's sometimes tricky to fit on the graph, but if I go over three, instead of going up nine, I'm doubling that and I'm going up 18. Why would I go up nine? Because three squared is nine. It's a quadratic relation. This is what I'm talking about. It makes you think about the relationship, right? So I go over three and I go up 18. That was eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I hope that was right. That looks right. Try to draw a smooth curve. Don't do this when you're drawing your curves, if you can. Don't shade it. Some people like to do these hairy lines that are like shaded. Don't do that. Try not to. I know it's a little bit tricky, but we try to draw a smooth kind of one line curve. That, something like that, arrows, and we've got it. Okay, so transformations, I have a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, a vertical shift down 3, and a horizontal shift right 4. And again, notice I use all words. I don't use positives and negatives when I'm describing them. Vertex is the shift right four and the shift down three, so four, three. Direction of opening is up. This has a min of negative three. Domain's always the same. Range is always the same. Or sorry, range is not always the same. Range changes. It's based on the minimum, right, and the direction of opening, or the min or the max and the direction of opening. So y is greater than negative 3. And then there we have that. Okay, I'm going to let you try a few to practice. I want to show you one thing, though. The other thing you can try, if you don't love drawing these, you have to learn to draw a couple. You have to try to, ladies, just listen for a minute. You have to draw, you have to practice drawing a couple because you're going to have to practice, you're going to have to draw it yourself on a piece of paper for the test. But if you want, you can go to craft, graphing quadratics in, uh, on, in the classroom with like your Chromebook, probably on a phone. It won't work very well. Um, and click that, and you can see if this works. But it's the same kind of idea, but instead of doing all the work like, like plotting the points yourself and drawing out the axes yourself, you can do it on a computer, and it would look like this. So here I've got an equation to do, and if I, I want to place a point, I'm going to find the vertex first, so I go over 5 and down 4, over 5 and down 4, and I put the vertex. Make sure I go over the correct way. And then I think about where the other points are going to be from there. So I'm going up because A is positive. And I'm um, doubling my ups. So when I go up one, squared I go up one, but I actually go up two. I go over two, square it, that's four, but I double it and go up eight. So I'm going to go up and find how high up is 8. And I put a few points on, and then I click check, and it just pops up and I see if I'm right. And then you can click new to get a whole new graph and try that one. Try it if you like, or you can do it on paper with the paper we got yesterday.